Hello, welcome to a new video. Today is the ultimate Halo tier list. That's right, I'm going to be ranking every single Halo game and putting them, at least in my humble, honest opinion, where they belong on this wonderful tier maker tier list. Now, this is an idea that I got from Ubernick, and I liked it so much, and I realized that my opinions are just a little bit different. And I figured, why not? Let's let's have our own go at it. So, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to uh, start off by ranking all of them. I think the best way to go about doing this is just going from left to right. Starting with Halo Reach. Actually, we'll start with right to left. That's how we'll, we'll do it. We'll start, we'll start right to left. Starting with Halo Fireteam Raven. Now, if you don't know, Fireteam Raven is a Halo game exclusive to Dave and Busters. Uh, I used to uh, work briefly at a uh, Dave and Busters, and I got to play a decent amount of, uh, of Fireteam Raven. And it's actually a lot of fun for an arcade game. Probably one of my favorite arcade games. It's very reminiscent of like Area 51 and that sort of deal. Um, so. Uh, if you rank it as an arcade game, I would go pretty high with it. However, I think the rules of this should be I'm going to rank them all as Halo games. And uh, since, you know, obviously it's an arcade game, it's a little light on the story department. And uh, it doesn't really go in depth because it doesn't need to. Um, it's not a bad game by any means, but it's not really a true Halo game. So I will start off by putting this one right here at D. Okay, so next off is Halo Wars, the first Halo Wars. I absolutely loved Halo Wars. Uh, when it came out, I don't even know when it came out now. What would it have been? 2000, I want to say like 2007, maybe 2008, somewhere around there, if I'm remembering correctly. Someone will correct me down in the comments below, but when it came out, I played it day and night. Um, mostly for the campaign. I absolutely loved it. And at the time, the cinematics in it were probably some of the best cinematics I ever saw up to that point. And even by today's standards, they hold up incredibly well. Sometimes I'll just look up the cinematics on YouTube and just feast my eyes upon their glory. So... Halo Wars was a lot of fun for me. I never really got too much into the multiplayer. I played a little bit with just my friends, but uh, I'm not very good at RTSs in the first place, so when I went online, I realized it was just mostly a race of who could get the most Grizzlies the fastest. And if you perfected your speed run to acquiring a max army of Grizzlies, you would probably win. Um, or you would rush with the Arbiter. That was never a lot of fun. Anyways, so... Halo Wars for me, I mean, as far as whether or not it's a good Halo game, I think it's a fantastic Halo game, especially with the story that we got from it. It was so different, so unique, uh, and honestly uh, led way for some major things to take place within the Halo canon in future games. Uh, it was a very important game, whether they realized it at the time or not. Uh, so I have to put Halo Wars at the B tier. Absolutely. Honestly, I would probably go higher, but I'm just trying to be a little conservative. Now, we're moving on to... Let's do both of these right now. We'll go out of order just a little bit, just for the time being. But we will do both of the mobile Halo games, because in my opinion, they're kind of one and the same. They are built on the same engine, I believe. They have the same exact controls. Uh, don't ask me what the stories were, because I played them on my cell phone when I was, you know, on my way to work or on a lunch break and stuff like that. I never really had audio. I was just kind of doing the quests and the missions. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. But again... Is it a real Halo experience? Uh, I think it's as close as you're going to get on the cell phone, or at least for the time it came out, which I think uh, Spartan Assault came out in... That had been right around 2011, I think. 2010, 2011. Spartan Assault was the first one, and then Spartan Strike, I believe, was the sequel, which I only played briefly. I don't think I ever even fully completed it because I put most of my time into Spartan Assault, and when the sequel came out, I just wasn't really interested in playing games on my cell phone at the time. Um, so I kind of am just going to lump these together, and we'll put them right here with Fireteam Raven at D tier. Okay, 
So, we're getting into a little bit more of the meatier ones, right? Halo 4, talk about a controversial hot topic of a game. My opinion on Halo 4, I liked it, but, but, I didn't like the multiplayer back in the day. Oddly enough, on the MCC, I find myself really enjoying the multiplayer, and I don't understand why I didn't back then, but I do today. That's a video for another time that I'll have to diagnose myself on. But the campaign in Halo 4, I thought, was expertly done. Uh, especially for 343's real first raw into making their own Halo game, right? This wasn't a remaster. This wasn't just an update like they did with Reach. This was their first Halo property. Um, and I think they came out of the gate swinging pretty damn hard. But they also took a lot of liberties and changed a lot of things. Everything from the art design to characters to lore... They really just went at it. And also, I mean, it was kind of ballsy when you stop and think about it. This was their first game, right, that they made fully as their own in the Halo universe. And what did they do with their first game? Something that Bungie didn't do at all for their installments. They showed the Chief's face. At least a little bit. Talk about one hell of a ballsy move. Hey guys, we just decided to make, you know, this is our first ever hurrah into making a Halo game. Here's the Master Chief's face. What? <laughs> With that being said, I absolutely loved the story. I wasn't a huge fan of the direction that they took the art design. But again, that's a different topic. Is it a good Halo game? And I think when you look at the core of the story, that is presented in Halo 4, it's fantastic. Especially what they did with Cortana. I couldn't praise it more um, at the time. Again, I wasn't a fan of the multiplayer back in the day. I think they took too many liberties and they kind of morphed it into, at the time, Call of Duty clone, right? You had your loadouts, you, you could customize, it was, you could call in kill streaks essentially for, for weapons. So there is a lot of bad, but mostly on the multiplayer side of things, in my opinion. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and put it right here in the middle at C tier. Yeah, I think it has a fantastic story, but the multiplayer definitely holds it back. Moving on to Halo 3 ODST. We all love ODST. It brought back the fear in Halo. When you see a group of enemies, you didn't just charge at them, no. You snuck around. You tried to avoid them at all costs. Or at least that's the way I played it. With the night sky and the soft, somber jazz playing in the rain. And it was just, oh. My god. Halo 3 ODST. For initially being released or uh, revealed as DLC for Halo 3 literally turned into its own game. Sure, it's a little bit on the short side, but it turned into its entirely own thing. And I think we were all better off for it. Halo 3 ODST easily gets A tier, in my opinion. It It's fantastic. Everything from the soundtrack to the art design to the characters and just the atmosphere the atmosphere just drips you can feel it in the air and i love it this next one is halo combat evolved i mean come on it, it's the halo game that started it all it's the one that invented what halo would be going into the future it's the one that invented the covenant dance that we all love and get addicted to it's that fantastic style of of gameplay and it was all nailed right from the get-go over 20 years ago at this point isn't that crazy to think about <laughs> i mean look if halo combat evolved wasn't cream of the crop would we still have a franchise going to this day i don't think so so halo combat evolved has to be s tier I mean, is it a good Halo game? It is THE Halo game. It is 
it is the defining factor as to what makes Halo Halo. It is the Halo game in which we compare all other Halo games to. It has to be S tier. There's no question about it. The campaign was excellent. Even the library was excellent. Beyond excellent for the time. And the multiplayer was revolutionary. We're moving on to Halo Wars 2. Halo Wars 2 was an important stepping stone for 343. It was their first time kind of giving in and giving the fans what they wanted. Uh, we saw the return of the classic Halo art style, but also mixed in was their own unique art style. And it kind of created this new blend of old and new, and it worked really well. Visually speaking, Halo Wars nailed the Halo aesthetic for the first time from 343. The campaign, fantastic. Amazing story that introduced the Banished, which is now obviously going to be the main antagonist of Halo Infinite. So Halo Wars 2 was massively important. As for the multiplayer, I never, again, got really into it. I never really got into it. Not my cup of tea. Uh, when I did play, uh, maybe because I was playing on PC, but I found the games were extremely laggy. Uh, often it would just freeze and I would have to wait for the other player to either disconnect or reconnect. The few times that I did have a solid match, it really did just feel like a race to the most powerful units. Um, I think the balancing is a little... Uh, off in the Halo Wars games. I think more units should be viable, but it really seems like everyone just goes and rushes towards the biggest, heaviest, hardest hitting units. And maybe there's a tactic to counter that. Maybe that's a noob tactic, and I just never learned the game well enough to know that all you got to do to stop that is to do this, this, and this. I never played it enough to learn. Um, so I never really got into the multiplayer, but the, the campaign, again, was really good and it's super important because it's what brought Halo back onto the right path. And it was the first time that I think the majority of the Halo community all agreed that it was the right direction to go in. Uh, so because of that, I'm also going to put it right next to Halo Wars 1 at B tier. Because I think it is a very important experience. Halo 5 Guardians. This is going to be a spicy one. A little controversial. Um, but I don't think Halo 5 had any redeeming qualities. Uh, keep in mind, I played Halo from the year that it released, which was 2015, I believe. I played for about a year. I played from probably 2015 to 16, something like that. And in that course of the year, I didn't really touch it. I mean, if you look at my playtime and you look at the matches, multiplayer matches played, it's pathetically small compared to the other Halo games. And that, I think, alone kind of speaks uh, leagues about it. But let, let's cover the campaign first, right? The campaign wasn't good. It's as simple as that. It was not a good campaign. Um, a lot of the weapons were redundant. A lot of the characters were just lackluster or altogether just irritating to watch and listen to the fact that you know 343 didn't really seem to know who the main character of of halo 5 was you put the master chief's face on the on the box or and yet you play as him for what three missions that's it i felt insulted instead we got Locke being shoved down our throat telling us that we had to play as him i didn't want to play as Locke. Now, if you take the original story that was presented to us from the marketing, that would have been a pretty intriguing story that I could have got behind. In fact, I was pretty damn excited for Halo 5 when it was releasing. I was like, holy crap, the Master Chief went rogue. Why? And now I have to play as a character to stop him? If we got that story, it could have been potentially awesome. But ultimately, at the end of the day, that's not what we got we got a clusterfuck of a story with more plot holes than I can think of and just lackluster writing and storytelling all around the board. The multiplayer, a lot of people argue and say that the multiplayer 
was enjoyable and fun and that's fine if you enjoyed it uh i personally didn't uh it didn't feel like halo the controls and the spartan abilities with constant dashing and slamming the ground and it just it, it was too much it felt more akin to a crisis game and if i wanted to play crisis i would play crisis i wanted halo and and we didn't get halo so is halo 5 a good halo game well in my opinion no because it didn't tell a halo rich story in my opinion again all my opinion but i don't think it told a story that really belonged or felt natural in the halo canon and universe the multiplayer was a shell of its former self with just wreck packs and microtransactions galore and the spartan armor and customization just looked terrible and that's another thing in general I don't know if anyone out there would ever agree with me, but I think Halo 5 visually is not appealing, especially the multiplayer. I think Halo 5 just looks wrong. It looks plastic. It looks badly lit. It looks bad. I don't know how else to say it. So I hate to do this to any game in my favorite franchise of all time, but Halo 5 gets F tier, in my opinion. It is not a good Halo game. If it had any other name but Halo, maybe I'd move it up a tier or two. But it's a Halo game, and I have to rank it as a Halo game. So, we are down to the arguably three of the biggest games that Halo has ever launched. So, we're going to go with Halo 3 first. Halo 3 is legendary. Be legendary, I'm legendary. When things get hairy, I'm legendary. Be scared of me, I'm legendary. When I succeed, I'm legendary. Be legendary, I'm legendary. When things get hairy, I'm legendary. Be scared of me. It was what spawned custom game night. The community grew exponentially when Halo 3 launched. And I think if you look at it as a Halo game, it's one of the best. Like, I mean, the campaign was fantastic. You finished the fight. It was incredible. The locales and the gameplay was so tightly tuned. At that point, Bungie knew exactly what they were doing with Halo. They had perfected the formula and now the technology caught up so they could make it visually impressive with graphics that I still think hold up to this day, except for the human models. The human character models look pretty rough and they did even when it first launched. I used to, you know, kind of chuckle when I would see them, especially Sergeant Johnson, his ears, they didn't look quite right to me. Other than that, the, the campaign was incredible it was the conclusion of you know a generation essentially of games and you don't get better than that the multiplayer again was just huge like i said it created custom game night fat kid juggernaut cat and mouse races mr president just the list goes on and on and on and people people were making their own games essentially inside of halo it grew to become so much more than what anyone probably originally expected from a first person shooter so halo 3 is s tier now we're moving on to halo 2 and this one is a little bit of a conundrum uh, see it's my personal favorite halo game right but I'm ranking these on what I believe are the best Halo games. Just because I have the fondest memories because of my point, the point I was at in my life at the time doesn't automatically make Halo 2, you know, the best Halo game. It just makes it a great one, especially in my nostalgia and in my mind and my memories. But that being said, Halo 2 is a fantastic game in its own right and was monumental and created, um, essentially what xbox live would look like in going into the future without halo 2 i don't think xbox live would have ever really been the same thing uh, in fact many of the features in halo 2 were adapted when xbox live officially launched halo 2 was huge the whole partying up system and matchmaking 
Uh, that was never uh, really a thing, at least on console that I'm aware of. You didn't invite your friend to a party and start a match. That's not how it used to be. You would just hit find match and you would have to, you know, wait for a match to be found. And I think the way it used to work is, you know, like old games, you would just find someone hosting a lobby and you would join them if you wanted to play with your friends. You would do custom stuff. Multiplayer matchmaking wasn't really a thing before Halo 2. I could be mistaken. Someone will probably call me out and say, hey, Casey, you know, this game and this game and this game did it way before Halo 2. And if that's the case, that's awesome. And I'm sorry that I'm mistaken. But I think Halo 2 did it first on consoles at the very least. Um, so we know the multiplayer for Halo 2 is huge, but the campaign is where people kind of either love it or hate it right it has an infamous development hell story everything from the game engine literally not being able to support what bungie wanted to do them losing data to them uh, coding in such a strange bizarre way that tweaking things would often cause a chain of events of things down the road breaking it was a nightmare of a game to develop for infamously known now many years later just how bad it really was so the fact that it is in the shape that it is is remarkable and really impressive to me um but it does have its flaws the difficulty is not right on halo 2 especially legendary anyone that's ever attempted it can tell you about the sniper jackals it has its fair share of issues but i still think Ultimately, it's a fantastic Halo game. Even though it's my personal favorite Halo game of all time, I can recognize its flaws and mostly do from its development hell, but it still hurts it at the end of the day just a little bit, but I still think Halo 2 is absolutely amazing and it deserves no less than A tier, in my opinion. And then finally, we are at Halo Reach. Now, Halo Reach is another fantastic Halo game. I personally enjoyed it, but it was probably the first real divisive Halo game to come out. And it wasn't from 343. It was from Bungie. They really shook up what Halo meant when it came to Halo Reach. Uh, they added new abilities. You could sprint. There was jetpacks. There was bloom and recoil on weapons you had to pace your shots the health packs came back it wasn't just regenerating health like they changed a lot of things when it came to halo reach and it kind of fractured the community and fan base just a little bit depending on who you ask it's either their favorite halo game or it's one of their least favorite for me it's definitely kind of in the middle uh there's days that i absolutely love halo reach especially the campaign uh the campaign i thought was really well done um I, the story was super intriguing uh however i thought the level design and layout wasn't super intriguing i mean it was amazing being on reach and finally seeing play out what we heard so much about and hinted at since halo combat evolved and they finally showed us in person essentially what they were leading up to and that was fantastic but i thought some of the level designs were a little hit or miss um, but the overall arching story was amazing the multiplayer it was frustrating it really was um it still felt mostly like halo but it felt like someone kind of kind of just messed it up a little bit right in the process of of making a new halo uh, and, and a lot of people will just immediately say, oh, well, that's just because Armor Lock ruined uh, the multiplayer in Halo Reach. And Armor Lock is a big reason. A lot of people dislike it. And I think that's a pretty valid reason. I mean, when you put a, uh, an element in the game that literally pauses the purpose of the game, the whole point of the game is to fight enemies. When you put something in the game that forces that to just come to a screeching halt, there's an issue and it breaks the flow of combat and uh, that is really frustrating. I personally never really used it or cared too much when I saw people use it. It never bothered me too much, but I can understand the people that absolutely hated it. 
Um, and that was just one of the many different abilities. You have jetpacks, which breaks the verticality of levels all of a sudden, you know, in Forge and, and, and even the campaign, levels had to be taller with more verticality, which was kind of cool at first, but then you realize they had to do that, otherwise there's no point in doing a jetpack because you'd just be an easy target if you don't have anywhere to go up to or things to, to cover you as you're flying around with it. Uh, Sprint was introduced to the game for the first time in a Halo game. Sprint was introduced, and now all of a sudden the multiplayer maps were longer and more spread out to account for the fact that people could run at double the speed that they used to be able to. So the maps had to change. And so, I mean, while a lot of Halo Reach's maps are fantastic, and I love a lot of them, uh, they they didn't really feel like Halo maps because of how much they had to change and adapt because of all of the new mechanics that were added to Halo Reach. And that is why ultimately it split the community, at least in my opinion and my recollection. So Halo Reach, I think, deserves to kind of be placed right here on tier C. So this is it right here, guys. This is my ultimate all Halo games tier list. Every Halo game that, well, until Infinite comes out, right? Every Halo game ever released in my tier list here. What about you? What's your tier list? Feel free to comment down below if you think my list is absolutely terrible or if you agree with it. And like I said, feel free to post your own tiers down below and let me know what you would do differently. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, but I think I had a lot of fun making it and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care everyone.